welcome to this ministry special. I'm Debbie Frazier. Glad to hear that these programs have been encouraging to you. If you missed one, go to TLN.com or TLNWest.tv and find out how and where to watch. During this program, we will take your call live or you can text our email, whatever is more convenient for you. We are here for you. Let's start with the scripture, John 14, 27. Hmm, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give this as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Today's guest is Chip Ingram. He's an author and the founder and teaching pastor and CEO of Living on the Edge. I'm so glad you're with us today, Chip. Great to be with you, Debbie. Thanks so much. You know, most of us want to have the kind of peace Jesus spoke about in that scripture that I just read. And it's, it's also normal for us um, to have fear. And right now, um, the kind of fear that we're facing with this virus, is, is that fear normal? Well, I think it's beyond normal because I think this is beyond anything uh, we've seen in our lifetime. I, I was talking to a mentor who I greatly respect. Um, he's lived a long time. And he just made this comment, ever that I thought was so profound. He said, you need to understand, this is like moving from the Iron Age to a next stage in human history. Uh, things will never be the same. And this will impact the whole world, and it'll impact us. We're in now the communication age. And um, how we respond, and it creates tremendous hardship, but it also is creating unbelievable opportunities. And it's, it's not unlike the first century. And um, the things that were so devastatingly difficult, and at the same time, it was those opportunities, um, the Roman roads, well, now we have the internet. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of things that I think God will do. But I, I think what we're talking about today is how do we respond as followers of Christ who are going to be critical? You know, um, as, you're, as you talk about that, we respond. You know, so many people... Um, on, on one piece of that, um, there are more jobs created, but so many people have lost their jobs and, yeah. and churches are hurting right now. And, you know, a recent poll survey that I think it was 65% of ministries surveyed, 65% of um, ministries that were surveyed, they've lost income too. Um, and people are praying for direction and, and we want you just to take a moment to do that. Pray for all of those opportunities um, that open to us at this time, but also those folks that are going through some hardships and churches and ministries and possibly parachurch organizations like yours yep. um, that are seeing the other side of this. And as we are hopeful for how the outcome will be for all of us, you know, there, we are in the trenches at the moment. And I'm just asking you to take a moment and just pray for individuals and for churches and parachurch organizations. Be glad to. Um, Lord, you know the number of pastors I've talked to, our mm -hmm. partnership with a number of other ministries, uh, churches that are down 25, 35% from normal ministries that um, so much of what they do is a face-to-face -face and they're doing as best they can digitally. Lord Almighty, God, we thank you that you're all knowing that you're all powerful, that you're sovereign, uh, that innovation and ways to help and people often grow out of the most difficult times. I pray first you would give us supernatural wisdom. I ask that you would grant the grace for every individual who are with us right now. Help them to endure. Lord, help them to um, trust you and not let fear dominate their life. God, we pray for churches across the Bay Area and across the world. Uh, that you would give them insight, perseverance, that you would move those in the churches to uh, support and encourage and pray. And Lord, I pray for our testimony. I pray that we could, like never before, love people, uh, encourage people, help people, meet very tangible, physical, spiritual, and emotional needs. So Lord, uh, you're not surprised by this. We ask you for your help and for your direction now in Jesus' name. Amen. A Amen. And on the other side of that equation, I was able to watch several sermons this past week 
Um, we've participated in Bible studies, virtual Bible studies. So you're right, a whole new world is open to us as we use that time, you know, to seek him through all this. Well, I think uh, we're going to have a decision, Deborah, and it's going to be, are we going to walk by faith or are we going to live in our fear? And when we're fearful, uh, very predictable things happen. Uh, it, cr it creates a scarcity mentality. When I'm afraid, then that focus goes, I got to look out for me. So I'm, you know, I'm going to get 25 rolls of toilet paper, or I'm going to take everything that's on the shelf, uh, you know, as we go into the stores now, versus uh, when, when you live by faith, it creates an abundant mentality. Uh, instead of I got to take care of myself, Jesus has my back. He promised he's going to provide. Um, my security when I'm fearful is money or my job, uh, my home, things that I can touch and feel. And it produces miserliness and in an inward focus. And when it's by faith, it's like, I'm going to trust God's promises. Uh, it may be a challenge. Uh, I don't in any way want to, you know, minimize how difficult and that the okay. human emotions and we're going to have disappointment and grief and up days and down days. But, but there's a fundamental, I am going to trust you, Lord, you're my security and you will provide all my needs. Um, I think we know that uh, he will do that. And that creates generosity. And so I think as we're generous, the early church and in all church history, in the worst pandemics, it has been the church that's been generous, often to the point of giving our life. Mm -hmm. So I think we have a, a great opportunity, but it's a big challenge. And I, I like what you shared recently um, about finding a purpose and perhaps, perhaps you watching right now are finding a new purpose for your life or purpose for the first time. But you, know, you spoke on that we are loved and we're unique and that life has a purpose for us. So I really appreciated that. We all uh, need to understand that God is not finished with us yet. Right. So with that, <laughs> what takeaway do you have for our viewers today to help us through this unprecedented time? Well, uh, let me just share a few thoughts that I hope will be helpful. Um, I actually have entitled this very short talk to encourage those that are with us, I Choose Peace. And I know God is in this because the one verse uh, at, that I chose as the core is the one that we didn't talk before the program that you quoted and actually read. And, and the reason I want to talk to all of us about I choose peace is because we need to understand that we have peace. Uh, this is, in other words, it is a choice. I'm not a victim. This virus uh, can't dominate my life. Uh, whether I lost a job, whether I'm sick, whether those that I love are going through a difficult time, uh, those are challenges. Uh, why are you surprised at the fiery trial that you're going through, First Peter says, as though something strange is happening to you? The fact of the matter is that in the world, Jesus said on the very last night, you'll have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I'm, I've, I've overcome the world. And so, you know, I think it's, it's really important that we realize we've got a choice to make. And I, and I think somehow it's like, well, when my circumstances get right, or, you know, if the, if the government funding comes through for my business, or uh, if my kids can, you know, get in the right school, despite of all this, then I can have peace. We can't live with a when something happens, or if something happens, then I can have peace. And what I've found is um, our mind is always asking questions. And what you need to do is ask the right questions because they come in waves, you know? Five minutes ago, we can be, you know, the Lord's got it. I'm so encouraged. I had a great time praying. I was just with a friend. Oh, wow. Uh, it looks like we're maybe, maybe going to get back to work soon. And then two days later, it says, well, we've got to shut this down. The money I thought was going to get. And we can live in this roller coaster. And, and God says, that's not how I want you to live. I want you to trust me. Uh, Jesus, in fact, says, my peace I give to you. I leave it with you. And then he would, he would tell him a little bit later, uh, I, I love this. How, how does that actually work in the same chapter, John 14? He says, and I will ask the Father, and he'll give you another counselor or comforter uh, who'll be with you forever. And the word there for another is one of the same kind. In other words, the Holy Spirit's role is not an invisible force. We're not living in Star Wars. The Holy Spirit is a person. 
And he's a person that manifests the presence and the power and the personality of Jesus. So that as I'm walking through this, everything that Peter and John and James and they had as they were walking on a dusty road, I have it, but I have it on steroids. He goes on to say, I will, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you before long. The world will not know me anymore, but you will see me because I live. You will also live. And then get this on that day. You will realize that I am in my father and you are in me and I am in you. And so the peace that we have is, is the presence of God. And I would just remind people, just those of us that are followers, think of every time, all these times, fear not, be not afraid, be courageous, be strong. What, what always comes after that? For I am with you. And, and it's true. Jesus is with you. His power is with you. His presence is with you. Here's the deal. Sometimes we experience it more than others. And how much we experience has to do with what we put into our mind, where our thoughts go, and is our heart at peace. And so let me just give you like three questions that have been super helpful to me uh, during this time. And, you know, uh, some of us have been through cancer. I was just talking earlier with uh, one of the staff members and, you know, his little, little one had leukemia. I went through uh, breast cancer with my wife. Uh, mm -hmm. Just a lot of us have been through a lot of deep times long before this, this just hit us all. And so here's, here's two or three questions. And I got these questions by looking at what did Jesus do? His disciples were what? They were gonna be abandoned. They were living in uncertainty. They were wondering what's gonna to happen to us. He's leaving. Uh, what they knew is now that they've received him as Messiah, many of their families were gonna kick them out of the family. Uh, James, the very first book will talk about they're dispersed abroad. They were living in a world where they were rejected, persecuted, financial loss, emotional loss, all the same thing. So what did Jesus give them and what did he promise? So here's question number one. When you're feeling afraid, when it pounds on the door, when you feel like, oh my, I don't know what we're going to do. We might lose our house. Here's my question. Uh, where's your future? Where's your future? On that night, after they shared the Lord's Supper and Jesus washed their feet, he said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if it wasn't true, I wouldn't tell you. In other words, the anchor for us, just, we tend to think that life is all about just this little thing called time. Jesus wanted to remind them life is really about this thing called eternity. And I want you to know at the core, at the anchor of your life, your future is secure. I've prepared a place. And I love that line. He goes, so you can be where I am. I want to be with you. I think more and more in our culture with all the information, we start thinking that Jesus is impersonal, that he doesn't feel that what we feel. He wants to be with us. He's given us his word. He's given us his spirit. And so I don't mean this tritely, uh, but I've sort of traveled around the world and had a lot of opportunities where it was like, I'm, I'm not sure I'm going to get through this one. And the absolute worst thing that can happen is that you die. And the moment as a follower of Jesus that I die, I'm immediately ushered into the presence of God forever. And, you know, as I've spent a lot of time in China, the Middle East, uh, we've done some training with partners where people before they were going to go back into Iran said to the trainers, will you help us to die well? Uh, before we go back, will you help us to die well? And, and I think there's, there's a reality where God is awakening and shaking us as his church and saying, wait a second. Do, do you really believe I am who I said I am? Do you believe in a literal heaven? Do you believe that right now isn't all there is and that the worst thing in the world is not if you have to change jobs or if your standard of living goes down or if someone gets sick or as a believer that even as, as difficult and painful, death is not the end. And so it, it's amazing when you start asking, where's my future? And I can say, my future is secure. And then he didn't leave them just with, well, that's way out there. Then he said, look, I, I, my spirit, my spirit sealed in you. My presence is available. And that's why what I would say it's going to be so focused. Question number two is where's your focus? 
you know, it's, sometimes we get these, these Bible stories and we minimize them. Uh, but, in, you know, P Peter, I like Peter, maybe because there's some personality traits. I tend to be impulsive. I tend to open my mouth too much. And I really identify with him. But what I liked about him, when everyone else was standing around, you know, he's kind of a guy of action. Lord, if it's really you, command me and have me walk out on the water with you. He says, come. And what do we know? When his eyes were on Jesus, um, no problem. The moment his eyes go to the waves, he starts to sink. And that's a great metaphor for us. Um, you know, 99% of all anxiety and all fear, think and listen carefully, is future focused. We're always asking, what if I get the disease? What if one of my parents get the disease? What if my kid can't get into college? What if, what if, what if, I, you know, my 401k is now a 201k. What if I don't have enough to retire? All those things, anxiety by its nature and fear often is focused on the future. Once you say, where's your future? It's with Jesus and he's with me. Then you have to ask, where's my focus? And, and, and don't get me wrong. Let, let, let's pretend that this is the problem, this little, this circle right here. Okay, you got that? <laughs> This, this is the problem, and it's the virus and everything. If, if it's out here, right, kind of way out here, it's kind of a little hard, and I have all of life, I have an all-knowing God, he spoke the galaxies into existence, he's risen from the dead, I have the promises of God, it's real and I've got to deal with it. But if I watch uh, the news, and then watch more of the news, and then I catch a briefing, and then I go on the internet, and I feed my mind, we're the product of our thinking, then pretty soon, here's what happens. I start looking at all of life through this virus. And pretty soon your emotions respond to your thinking. So now I'm afraid. Now my stomach is churning. Now I'm getting panic attacks. Panic attacks. Now I'm struggling. Now I've become negative with other people. Now I feel, <laughs> it's, it's a spiral. So here's what I wanna say to you. First of all is, where's your future? And if you ponder that, you realize it's secure. Then where's your focus? Is it on the problems? Is it on the virus? Now, once a day, I'm going to check in, find out if there's anything new. I got it. I don't need to hear. And every news media wants your attention. So the most outrageous, the most scary, uh, that's the information we're going to get. I, I will tell you, there's probably nothing you can do better than to take one passage that, that you know God speaks to your heart. It might be the 23rd Psalm. It might be Romans 12. It might be Isaiah 40. Uh, it might be Psalm 27 or Psalm 37. And just say to yourself, you know what, whatever passage where God really speaks to me, when I wake up, just as I'm waking up every morning, even before I get out of bed, I just start the process and I will pray through Psalm 23 or pray through the Lord's Prayer. And not, not rotely, our Father who is art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, but our Father. Today, before I start, you're my Father. Yeah. You care about me. You're in heaven. The billions of galaxies, you spoke them. And I'm laying in bed, I haven't got up yet, because the first things that go to your mind are be the trajectory of your day. The last things that go into your mind before you sleep. So where my focus is, is it in God's word? Is it on the things that are positive? Is it taking some walks in nature in the midst of this? Uh, those two questions have been just a huge help. And my final question, because I think I'm getting near my, my time here, I wanna, don't want to run over, is ask your question, where's my expectations? I think it's very interesting that um, when Paul is writing to Timothy, uh, not that this is, could ever happen in our day, but apparently there were some false teachers and a lot of controversy. And, and he ends it in 1 Timothy 6 with saying, you know, don't get involved in all these disputes and argument, malicious talk, evil suspicions, constant friction between men of corrupt minds who have been robbed of the truth, who think that godliness is a means of financial gain. In other words, they were using the gospel thinking, the, I'm just going to use, quote, religion, the gospel, to get rich. And then he says, but godliness with contentment, peace, is great gain. In other words, there is a great reward to walking with God. It's not money. He says it's contentment or peace. And then this next line, 
I don't know that we've read this one in a while, especially in America. For we brought nothing into this world and we will take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, with that we will be content. What I would just say is, do you have food today? Do you have clothing today? And if you do, um, the Lord promises that he will provide and take care of you. But there's not promises about um, how much money you make, what part of the country you live in, um, what kind of car you get to drive, what kind of clothes, how many times you can go out to eat. We in our country and in the world have never lived with such affluence. And we have now begun to tell God by our behavior, not our words, that whenever those things start to diminish, we're, we're good with, oh Lord, you know, we, we live in a time in world history like never before. But are you willing to say, hey, I don't, God didn't promise that I would always have this level of affluence. You know what? Maybe I need to rent out of, instead of own a home. Maybe I need to sell my newer car and I get a used car. In other words, God says, I'm going to provide, but look at your expectations. A lot of us can get very anxious and uptight because we're starting to lose some things we become accustomed to. And I would just close with this. Um, one of the things the Lord always does when he brings about or decrees or even allows these kind of challenges is he purifies us. And at whatever level you're anxious or resentful or angry about something that's been taken away, to that level, that thing has become an idol in my life or yours. And, and I think in many ways, this, this virus is revealing us. I mean, if you can't sleep at night because your 401k went down, if you can't sleep because your job might change, I, I understand those things are very important. But what God would say is, you know, I'd like to wean you of those. They really don't have the power and they, to give you security or significance. So I, I'm asking myself each day, each moment, I want to choose peace. I can only choose peace if I'm living by faith instead of by fear. But I'm going to have real emotions. And when they bombard me, where's my future? Where's my focus? What are my expectations? And um, that's been a process that's been very helpful for me, Deborah. And I hope it's helpful for those that have joined us. You know, I'm going to ask you to pray in just a couple minutes on those three points for us. As you were talking, some things came to mind for me. You know, for me, where are my expectations? It really depends upon where my focus is, because I can tell you now when my expectations, I'm honed in, when my expectations are on God's will, yes. then my... Um, when my focus is on that, then my expectations are. When my focus is on my will, then it gets a little cloudy. Um, and, you know, when you talk about our focus, it's important to establish our focus, though you really can't until you are committed to your future. Amen. So my future is, my future is in God. And I'm praying that that's, the future of our viewers. So I want you to pray for that specifically. But when that's in place, then we can look at our fo focus, then our expectations are so different. Yes. And another thing before you pray is you reminded me of Mark 439. Peace be still. And listen to this, because I love the way you worded it. You know, I choose peace. Yes. But you know, peace can be hard to find based upon where our focus is. But he gives it to us. That peace, we don't have to chase. We don't have to run for it. It's just given to us to the point of then he arose and he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. You know, Pastor Chip, I want that calm. Mm -hmm. For our viewers, I want that peace that you talked about. So will you pray that we can get our focus right and be ready for that future God has for us, whatever yes. that future is for us individually? I'd, I'd love to. Father, first and foremost, you promised that if we didn't know what to do and we needed wisdom, mm -hmm. that if we were willing to do whatever you said, 100% of the time that you would give it and you wouldn't reproach us. 
And so, Lord, I pray for those that are stuck and, and are saying, yeah, I want the right focus, and I believe my future is with Jesus, but I don't know what to do, and I need that peace. Father, will you show individuals right now at this moment what step they need to take to draw near to you? Because you promise when they do, when we do, you will draw near to them. And Lord, when we experience your presence, we always have your peace. I want to ask you too, for those that didn't plan on joining us, they don't normally even watch, and somehow they found themselves watching and they realize they, they don't know the Jesus that we're talking about. And if you don't, I want you to know that he loves you and he's for you. And today he would invite you, come to me. If you feel overwhelmed and burdened and stressed out and fearful, first and foremost, I want to love you. I want to forgive you. Come to me, call out, cry out, Lord Jesus, help me. I'm afraid. He has died on the cross to pay for your sin and he rose from the dead and he longs to help you today. And there's people right at the station that would love to help you uh, on your journey and of experiencing what it is to have new life in Christ. And Lord, I pray for um, the great majority of people that are followers of yours, that you would give us the discipline to focus on the truth, to be in your word, to sit quietly before you and be people who are givers and encouragers because there's something amazing that when we give away our faith, when we care for others, uh, we receive so much more. So we love you. We need you. We thank you. Help us to choose peace this week and today. Blessed name. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer, shout it out. Give us a call or you can text or email. Let us agree with you. Say it, speak it, and then move into that peace that Pastor Chip was talking about. I thank you so much for being with us today. Okay. Uh, and I also want um, our viewers to know that I really enjoyed Jesus, the coronavirus, and you, two questions to ask when fear grips, and that's on your Living on the Edge site. So thank you for that. And we're taking people through a daily discipleship if they're interested. How do you keep that focus? And so I, I just, people have always asked me, will you disciple me? And so I, I just, I, each day I'm walking people through, not a Bible study, but how to meet God. We call it uh, Lote at Home or Daily Discipleship. And it's on our app or website. Um, it's, everything's free. We're just trying to help people right now. Well, thank you. And thank you for helping us today as well. Uh, and if you want to watch more of our specials, go to tln.com or tlnwest.tv for the schedule that works best for you in your time zone or to watch online. Give us a call if you get a voicemail because our lines are busy. We always return the call. Hmm. Thank you for being with us. And I just want to say uh, one more thing to you, um, Pastor. Peace. Hmm. Peace in the midst of the storm. That's kind of the ending message here today. Would you agree? Amen. Thanks so much. Right. So uh, thank you for watching. Stay safe and stay centered in Christ. And remember, choose faith. Choose your future and let that future be in Christ. Everything else will come together. <laughs>